Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. Uh, right now at the table of dim lighting, we've got Mr. Steve Pink. We usually don't do this. We usually don't start with our guest, but we're in what is called a time crunch. <laughs> and so we are just hitting the ground running. Welcome, Steve, Thank the you. director of Buddy System Season 2. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for having me. And we just That's, wrapped, man. I know, just the like other day. Like we freaking just wrapped just a couple of days ago. Yeah. And we literally just walked off of the. Um, photo shoot, they call it the key art photo shoot. Yeah. Link Where, is still in character? Yeah, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't changed back into Link, I'm still just Link. I'm Buddy System Season 2 Link. Right. Which is kind of the, that's the Link that you know. That's the Link like, I know. Y you pretty much know a Link with a mustache. That's all I know. So when I shave this thing off, we're in be, two hours. We're gonna be complete strangers. And then we, we're, gonna, we're gonna be strangers. <laughs> and, we, and we go to the rap party, Everyone's just going to be talking about how I look different. I might not shave the mustache till after that because I don't want that to oh. be the thing I have to talk to everybody about. Right. Wow, you you don't look as good without the mustache. That's not what I want to hear. Right. Well, they might not say. They could just go, "Oh, you." It could be slightly worse because it would be more g generic. Like they might just say, "Oh, you shaved off your mustache." Right. No comment. Oh, hey. Again and again and again. You shaved off your mustache. Like a non conversation conversation yeah because they don't know what to say uh, they can't right. they can neither say and it looks worse and if they say oh and it looks so much well some people might say and you look great but then that also implies right. i've been looking horrible right so for this whole show it <laughs> does give people something which to talk i know about. i have <laughs> but, it but gives i don't people want something to talk about which i think is good. i think giving people something to talk about is is a good thing for a party i'm personally you know i'm a, I, as soon as we finish this i'm going to a doctor's appointment because I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my throat. I think it's just stress. I think we just overworked ourselves. Yes. Yeah, and I think I'm coming down from it, but I'm going to see a professional before we, we leave to go to New York just to make sure that everything's okay. But I'm afraid of like party talk. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that I'm gonna go to party, have a party talk situation and lose my voice. Yeah, so I, I, if you shave your mustache, all the attention will be on you and I won't have to talk about anything and people just come to me and I just point at your face. So I think you should shave it. That's my personal opinion. Which ironically, we've gotten very good at that. Pointing at each other? From not speaking and communicating. Mm. Not right. that that is a, is a major part of a, of a buddy system episode. I'm also gonna take my headphones off now. So you don't need them, you're saying? That doesn't mean I'm disengaging from the conversation. It just means, I mean, I like what you got going with the hat and the headphones, but mine is not really sitting really well for me, so. Mine are kind of drawing my ears back in a weird way. You don't want it either? I, I'm gonna try taking them off now. Yeah, yeah, okay. you, yeah you should. Well, Now that you know how it sounds. And now you can be the, you Now can I'm monitor. in charge of like keeping you guys on, on mic. Not necessarily. You can't self-regulate anymore. You'll be back here and no one will know that well, you're just being. Uh, can we come up with a hand signal that you can unleash? Yeah, yeah, like bring this, it in. Bring it this. in. Okay, it looks like bring it. Counting money is what it looks like. That's right, because I get paid every time I tell you to bring it in. <laughs> uh, I just thought it would be. You, you know, it, it it's funny. We didn't have that many times, that many to chill? windows of opportunity to have like to just talk when we were on set because, you know, so we can talk about that, but there were just certain moments when we'd have like this flash in the conversational pan with Steve Pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where I would, where Very I'd, quick. I'd Very, learn, yeah, quick something, yeah. learn something about the guy and be like, mm, we gotta podcast that up. <laughs> and then we gave you no way out because we asked you in front of everybody, like right before you're, you're like, all right, is everybody set? You're about to call action. And we're like, oh, Will you come on our podcast? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and I didn't. So we didn't give you any out. You didn't. You didn't. Although we, we were talking about except this. the word no. Yeah, I could I have said no in front of everyone. I don't think I have that kind <laughs> that of courage. Would, that would have been a bold move. Yeah, and that would have been know, like no one, they, That would have been a great set story for uh, all of those the whole crew. Yeah, you got right. to listen this one time. I had these two guys making this show, and they asked the director to be on their podcast, and he said no, just <laughs> just and immediately yeah. afterward action. <laughs> uh, no action. No, uh, no, I don't do that. Great. Oh man, yeah. Well, that's you know, I perhaps should have done that. You know, um, no, I've you been traumatized have. ever. Well, because we were, I was saying like, oh yeah, I love to be on their podcast, and then I've you know been in, you know, I've had an anxiety attack <laughs> ever since that moment. <laughs> oh, I, I was don't talking do it. to my wife like, why, why, why would I do that? Why would I be on a podcast? Because so, you know, there are other people who I recognize, but it's as so being dimly extremely lit, good at it. Steve, I do like that, and this is properly shaded. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, perfectly. So I feel like there's something, there's some protection in that as well. And Rhett is with you. Is that why you wore your hat? Because you knew Steve was going to wear his hat. Yeah, 
Definitely. I don't even own one of these hats, The reason I wore my hat is because I've got this going on, which once you take my man bun off, it's like cutting my testicles off, you know? It's like then I've just got this weird eunuch cut. So you're telling me that in normal life, in your normal look, you don't have testicles. (laughs) Right. I agree. No, when my hair goes up, it's like, uh, I don't wanna keep going with a phallic analogy, but it's it's like a penis. But well, take it's it like back a lot off. of penises. Take it back off one more time and just look at Steve. It's the the back is look even further. Look past Steve. Th- there's a thing happening for Call you. Call my duck tail. For uh, you yeah. audio only listeners, which are the superior version of this show, um, you're not missing anything except some weird back ba- back head hair situation. <laughs> back head hair situation. I remember we talked about. In one break, we didn't have a lot of breaks. I, no. I don't want to complain about our sh- uh, about the nature of our show, but we. I mean, I'm sure the three of us could sit down and commiserate forever about how hard we worked. We could, and and but, but it was that no one it was a that. pleasure working so hard for yes, you and was. alongside you. Thanks, likewise. But at one point, we were talking about the 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 classic question of if you're stranded on a deserted island. Mm-hmm. Or if there's dessert there, it's a a dessert island. island. (laughs) Um, And you could only take an unlimited supply of one particular food, what would it be? I don't know if that's the classic question, but Mm -hmm. that's the one you answered, and that's the one I cared about. But you had two, you weren't there. I insisted on two. I know this answer very well, because I insist on two for some reason, which breaks the rule of the game right away. Like right off the bat, it makes the game less challenging. And before you answer it, the thing that I loved about it, and the thing that, one of the many things I love about Steve, that I could tell when we talked, it it came up in conversation, but it wasn't like I just posed the question to you and you thought of an answer. No, this was something you had thought about previously. I I think actually this is something you were pitching to us. Maybe. Which with all the pitching we do to other people, and like stumping people, I really enjoy it when someone's really thought about something thoroughly and then they bring it up and we get put on the spot. Hmm. But give, a, give, give us your, uh, your answer now that I've built it up as being so well thought out. Well, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I, I, I cheat the moment I, I, make, I propose the idea, yeah. right, the concept. Right? Only one well, thing. Right, yeah, you can only have one thing. If you could, eat, if you could only eat one I guess type of food, a category of food on a desert island. You were on a desert island and you only had one category of food to eat for the rest okay. of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, what would it be? Like, uh, would it be what, I, would it be cereal for me just because I love right, cereal? Right, and that's it. You get cereal and milk, and that's it. You're you know for the rest mm-hmm. of your life on a desert island, and so I love peanut butter. Could it just be peanut butter? It could. Could be. it be peanut butter spread upon anything that I could spread it upon? Sure, <laughs> sure. But then you couldn't change it, right? So if you went, you know, right. with a graham cracker. Oh, that's it. Although, like I said, I since I cheat almost like the moment I propose the game, Go for then it. Um, then I think you could probably have not only not only any type of cracker, but you could also have maybe any a different kind of peanut butter or even an almond butter. Really? Um, oh, what nice. about a buffet? Is a buffet a category of food? See, I that's for some ridiculous. reason, yeah. <laughs> well, I get you know you know for for in some buffets, sure, because there's uh, some buffets which are just that thing that everyone's like cottage cheese, like canned fruit. Mine would be salad. like a like a like the biggest like golden corral, like everything. Right. I'd have a go- access That's to not a golden corral. That's not, can you take a restaurant to a deserted <laughs> island? What restaurant would you open on a deserted island? Golden corral. <laughs> <laughs> do you even know what a golden corral is? I do only because I just went to one for the first time um, this year, actually. I went to, the, to one and I was both, you know, judgmental and, you yeah. know, and snobby and superior about it and then massively and then massively enjoyed it. Yeah. Like, it's, I, was, I mean, it's, I was like, right. this is one of the best experiences of my life. Yeah. But you can't, you can't do it on a, I mean, there are people that we know from back home in North Carolina who could go multiple times a week. I mean, I can go I can go once a year to a Golden Corral and then Golden Corral out, you know? Mm-hmm. So maybe it's not a good answer because I'd have to eat it every day on this island. Right, that would be it. That would be it. So even, that's the thing. That's the, the kind of tricky and fun thing about the game because even when you say, okay, I'm gonna cheat and have all this variety as my answer to the game, mm. you, once, once you start to mm. really consider it, right, yeah. then you feel limited by it, right? right? Even. Golden Corral. Suddenly, it's not enough options, mm, right? Yeah. It's interesting. You okay. can't escape I, the dark heart of humanity. A, I still don't know your answer. Mine is uh, sushi and cheeseburgers. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Right, because I want sushi. I want the fine, you know, because I like, you know, I like the, you know, the I like the freshness of, you know, fine cut, finely cut raw fish. Is that how you say it? Not finely, yeah. sushi fine. cut fish. 
with rice, and then there's all the fun, you know, kind of rice and fish combos that sushi provides. And mm -hmm. then, um, and then, but then I'd be like, oh, I'm really still hungry. I want something greasy and a guilty you know, pleasure. Filling. A guilty pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, but yeah. I don't want to be so refined. I want hmm. just some. Che I want a cheeseburger and fries and a coke. So what, from I would be where okay. though? Because I mean, I'm 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 cracking open a whole other can here. But I mean, if you're gonna have only one cheeseburger, you should probably choose where it's from to make sure it's exactly how you want it. And that's a where would that be? That's a whole thing in and of itself, which oh, I think gosh, has emerged yeah. as a as a more difficult question to answer over the last few years, right? Yeah. With the craft burger or whatever oh, yeah. they would yeah, call yeah, it. Right, like you have to pick your category. Yeah. So you don't know, you, but do you have that answer? I, you know what? I would say whatever they dropped off the C130. Like if there was a plane that dropped it off. You know what I mean? Like, but if you could choose. If I could choose, I mean, would it be In and Out? Would it be the Steak that'd, and Shake? That'd be my I'm Shake not, Shack. I haven't had a Shake Shack. Is that all it's cracked up to be? Mm. It's been a long time since I had one. I remember enjoying it. It got uh, Lily went uh, with a friend the other day, and she came back with a magnanimous report. She did. Where do they have one? Glendale, homie. Oh. I would probably default to In and Out, but. I, I would like to reserve my right to taste Shake Shack and then revise my okay. answer. Right? I love a good cheeseburger. I think I do Five Guys. You would think, yeah. and a lot of people would mm -hmm. say pizza because you might shift what's on the pizza and you're like, you got That's a Hawaiian what I would say. If, pizza. If you're talking about that category and, and you don't, won't let me do Golden Corral Buffet, pizza is the one I would choose because you've got. A lot of loopholes with the pizza. Yeah, you got a lot of food groups in one. Same and I question. will point out with the sushi that, I mean, you can probably just swim off your deserted island and, and like hand spear a fish and, I mean, that's pretty much sushi. Yeah. It's gonna ruin a little bit that there are all these fish swimming around you and you're just eating raw fish. Right. I'm it's being delivered by a plane. Right, I'm unnecessarily giving away a category. <laughs> yeah, right, right? right. Because right. I could, could say pizza anyway. and cheeseburgers and then secretly be like, and I'm gonna catch some raw fish <laughs> yeah, and eat yeah. it. It's right. Like, yeah. right, it's almost like saying, I'm a, I, I would like on my deserted island to eat just sand sandwiches. <laughs> you know, then you realize, oh, that was right. a little bit short-sighted on right. my part. Right. As intrigued as I am by this Let's conversation, mm -hmm. I do think we do need to talk about buddy systems some, really, right? Let's That's do probably, it. But mm -hmm. before we do that, uh, we need to, we need to merch it up. Merch it up. Uh, let's take a short break, and we're gonna. Uh, wh where's that merch? Where is it at, Link? Where's it? we're gonna talk about the Good Mythical Summer Sale, right? Uh, where, where's it? We oh. get it over there. <laughs> oh, right you, here. Check it out. So we got twenty percent off. Twenty five percent off. Twenty five percent right? off. Mm. All Good Mythical Morning Classic Good Mythical oh, wow. Morning merch. Just for you, Steve. Over at rentlink.com slash store. Look at this. So we're talking t-shirts. We're talking beanies. Wow. We're talking hoodies 25% off now steve what of this do you want because you have to you keep 25% 25% off, for off. Yep. can i see what the original price was oh, there's no price tags you have to well, look i'll just, on. I'll just say that it's 20 okay um well I definitely the i'm i like navy okay these are my high school colors by the way really um, yeah blue orange navy and, and navy and orange? orange yeah wild kits it's like it's like virginia oh, is that right yeah so U i i UVA. like that and then uh, i wear my beanie a certain way so i'm not sure that it, this would work we'll have to see I don't have a mirror or anything. Let's see if it would work. I'm trying on the just one try on the merch yeah, in the yeah, middle yeah, of the. Yeah, yeah, you can try it on. So it needs to be kind of a tight, straight line, and not too much top. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a the gratuitous tag. tag. That's no, but that we, goes but we, away. But we encourage people to continue to wear the tags because that's what that's the kids okay. are into now. It could work. I don't know. Does it? Does it? Is it? That works. Is it straight across though? And I mean, it would be with a little assistance. With a little assistance. If we yeah. gave you a mirror, which we don't sell, yeah, then yeah, you would yeah. look great. All right, so okay. that, that right. concludes our promotion. Right. Uh, you're thoroughly convinced. 25% off, G get that logo, guys. I don't know if it's going anywhere, but uh, it's commemorative. It's commemorative. I think it might be. Okay, so I remember the first conversation that we had, right? We had, that we had a meeting, it's right in here in this room over here in our office. Because we had to decide who's gonna direct our, you know, our baby. Yeah, and we uh, we wanted to have a meeting with you for uh, season one, but mm -hmm. you were unavailable on another project at the time, and so and then it came, your name came back up, and we're like, oh, he'll never do it, he'll never do it. But we should at least have the meeting with him. So we had that meeting, and then I remember you 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 didn't. A lot of people, you know, you, you have a meeting with them, and you can kind of tell that they did the like you know the 20 minute skim before the meeting to kind of know how to talk about right what they're about to talk about but uh 
correct me if I'm wrong, you had watched the entire first season. I watched the first season, yep. Yeah. I watched the first season that and, I read. And beyond. Well, you'd watch other stuff too. Uh, yeah, and then videos and some sketches. Just I, Well, then it was random, right? I watched the first season and I was like, what else is all these cats about? You know, and so mm-hmm. then I just random video or sketch. So I did, you know, it was I, I just logged time because I couldn't, after a while, I, um, I couldn't figure out like how, what logical order to watch things in. So I would just watch videos because I remember saying to you like, yeah. oh, that was awesome. And you're like, that was six years ago. And I was like, oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So you know. So some things I watch. And you're, We're you're ashamed like, we of that. It's like yeah, we don't do that anymore. So I watch some older stuff and some newer stuff, and and then you know, and then read the wiki. That's when we wiki talked about helpful. Portmanteau. Portmanteau. Yes. Is that, is that yes. how you say it? Uh-huh. Portmanteau. Remember? The wiki is extensive, man. That thing is out of control. Yeah, I read the whole. I thing. I don't remember the portmanteau. It I believe starts, the whole thing starts with that. Yeah, someone should look it up. And I, I, first of all, I'm not sure I'm saying that word um, correctly. I'm not sure if I'm saying if I'm pronouncing pronouncing it right. But entertainment. It says you're yeah, a yeah. portmanteau of dot 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 dot. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I was surprised. I was like, I don't know what that what word is, is really. And entertainers. It, it's it, com- does it, it means putting two words together, right? Is that right? Is See, that I, what that portmanteau I, I, for, is? I think I probably looked it up prior to that meeting, but have since forgot forgotten. I do that um, a lot. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you. But you had an assessment. Yeah, I mean the thing that. I think it's hard to assess yourself. Um, and when it comes to Buddy System Season 1, I mean, honestly, one of the things we were disappointed with was it it didn't get enough attention from... I'm not saying we wanted, like, critical attention, but I, I guess I am saying that. It is, it's, I was very curious what if someone who is critical for a living assessed our show, um, what they would say about it. And I would say that when you came in, you kind of... You gave your take on it, and uh, it was it was very. Uh, I, I guess I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having someone that I respected their work, who took the time to look at our stuff and then had thoughts about it, and who you assessed our style in a way that, like, when you're in it and you live it and you just make it up as you go along, and you find yourself creating stuff that you never you you, you can never step out of yourself and assess mm-hmm. what you really think of what you've done. So it's nice when someone that you respect that you don't know. I mean, you could have, you could have said, you could have said anything that could have been lip service. But I could tell that like, you had actual thoughts about it, and we we really appreciated that, and yeah. you had good ideas well, to, <laughs> to build upon it. And that, that was that was I was that I probably mustered all that I could you know muster uh, for that meeting. I was like, oh, these are all the well, good it was ideas I have. For us. I put them together in a half hour and hope I. Because it's a lot to, to dec- it's a lot to decide in, in one like thirty minute meeting. It's like, yeah. okay, are we gonna we're gonna get in bed together creatively? I don't remember. Well, I wasn't there Cre- for that either. Creatively, <laughs> you, guys, you know, you guys it's it's quite a commitment. Talking yeah. about what to you're gonna picking enjoy a director. on a desert island and sleeping together, and I'm just out in the cold. I guess it's a commitment the other way too, and I and which would explain why you actually watched our stuff. You don't want to just jump into a creative bed with um, somebody with two guys and then. Have to make their thing or direct it. You know, it could be it could be really bad. Well, in yeah, terms of the situation, it could be bad. But I mean, I, I think beyond you know whether you know. Well, yeah, I guess I wouldn't go to the meeting if I was like it's not creatively yeah. my thing. But also then you know I'm always like I always feel like um, we try to avoid a situation where you want to kill the people you're working with. And if yeah. you don't like their stuff yeah. and they don't like how you're how what what you're about, then you're just going to try and kill each other for most of the time you're together. Right. Which beyond the creative process is just not. <laughs> Not a wise choice, you know. Right. Um, but I feel like, and maybe you can tell me what you feel. I I felt like it was always trying to be deeply funny without trying too hard, and also be deeply interesting, which mm-hmm. is a tough combination. Like you, there's there's plenty of stuff that's just so funny, and you just get it. You know, it's just you mm-hmm. know, and a lot of the stuff that we did this season and that you do is just kind of like readily hilarious. But then there are other things that are. Readily hilarious and also something you that you have to really kind of, you know, absorb, um, or yeah. when you absorb, find that there's other kind of levels to it, um, and that was what I liked most. I was like, oh, yeah. this, you guys are trying to figure something out. <laughs> I don't always know what it is, um, but you're you're like you like the ideas and you want to explore. Well, what it's they funny because we, you know, I kind of have um, I'm of two minds about this because there's the like. Um, there's the thing that I want to believe, which is like, um, yeah, I think this is a, I think this is a legitimately original approach to to comedy 
this is an original, like we like to maintain a, a sense of originality and not have anybody be too, not be too referential. I mean, nothing, you know, everything's remix, of course, but to not be able to just have people point out, you guys are just like this or just like that, or you're, you're a combination of this or that, so that there's a sense of originality. But then I think that there's this other part uh, of my mind, and I'm sure Link has the same thought, which is just like, when are people gonna figure out that we're just posers? You know, <laughs> I think every professional in entertainment business feels that way. You're I like, feel like I'm posing right now. Right, exactly. <laughs> You're like, when are they gonna figure out that I don't have any idea what I'm doing? Or you know, We've kind of mm -hmm. felt that our entire career. It's like, mm -hmm. when are they gonna figure out that we actually are just really good at making you think that we know what we're doing? Right, well, but I think that's which probably- is what I, Which is what I'm saying when S Steve came in with like a very, uh, intellectual assessment, like you really thought about the way that we had made the stuff we had made, and I was like, "Oh, well, we fooled him." So that we, we're doing <laughs> we the can right fool thing. Fool other people too. <laughs> no, I, I mean, like specifically, I remember you made um, you made an observation of something about how we would choose to make left turns in things. I can't remember exactly what what you thought of it. Maybe you remember. Yeah, like, but it resonated with us. It was like, well, we never thought about it that way, but. Yeah, we do try to do that. Yeah, like the commitment to a deep dive digression, I guess is how I would oh, say it. Oh, yeah, sounds, yeah, yeah. Sounds kind of cool. But that is just an uh, kind of an area of comedy that I've always been interested in. And, and, and people have done in the past, and when I was super little, that the things that I thought was, I, what, I, what made me laugh beyond the jokes, like you'd see a scene and it's really funny and then you'd laugh. And then the scene would take you to another place, which would not only make you laugh, but you'd realize you were going down some rabbit hole of the comedy you just enjoyed, and now you're being forced to enjoy it um, on another level and then on another level, all within the same laugh, kind of. So like Monty Python did that, there was like a famous pet store um, uh, sketch where uh, John Cleese goes into a pet store and says, I think it's to Michael Palin that his parrot's dead and it's demonstrably dead, you know, it's just like a stiff <laughs> parrot, like stuffed right. parrot, and he bangs it on the counter and you know, is trying to convince the pet store owner that the, the parrot's dead and the pet store owner refuses to believe it's dead because he doesn't want to give the guy a refund. Right. And oh, then okay. that, at the end of that sketch, turns into a song because I believe, and my memory is vague on this because it's been a long time, but I believe the pet store tries to sell him uh, in return instead of giving him a refund, a half a bee. Like literally a half a, a bee. A half of a honeybee? A half of like a honeybee. Which half turns a bee. in Yeah, a half a bee. Which turns into a song entitled Eric the Half a Bee. Because he... Yeah. Which which he took home. I uh, think that's I, the point. Yeah, and I don't you remember. Question, I don't remember because right, at that point it's a song about a half a bee named Eric. Eric the half a bee, I believe. And it's you know all the people listening to this can check my facts on this because it's been. I mean, I was eight years old or nine right, years right, old. So, right. but that's just what I remember. Now they could have been totally two different sketches, and I can <laughs> I, I put it in my head as something that was connected. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Um, but um, when I start when I saw you know when I saw your work and I saw that you would you know, take these left turns and then go down that road as far as possible, leaving behind anything you might have set up to begin with, to me was just, you know, great. Right, like funny. the belly button song. I don't even know if you watched that one, but yeah, I don't I don't know why we did it, but it was like, all right, if if we're gonna add a second verse to this song about two guys discovering in, in their late 30s that they have belly buttons for the first time, if we're gonna continue that song through a second verse, well, something else needs to happen, which involves, uh, selling coal plants door to door to children. Right. And I don't, you know, it's like, if you look at point A and point B, it's like, how on earth could this happen? But it's like, you know, okay, we got them along for the ride as long as they don't click away. Mm -hmm. So it, it's weird how I think there's two factors that brought us there. It was, it was one, you don't want people to click away. So you can't retread, you can't sing a chorus again. The chorus has to be new lyrics every time. But then also, um, I, d I just don't like, I don't like n knowing that the audience feels like they know where I, this is going. They know where this is going, and then it does. Mm -hmm. I like them expecting it to go somewhere, and then it never does. And I think that's right. true of uh, hopefully every episode. Mm -hmm. Oh, for uh, sure. Of season two is this like when the, that opening scene is not really going to be it, you, you. I don't know how you could figure out what the closing scene is going to be based on the opening scene. There's it's there's it, this, even with the setup, you don't really know what the overall punchline is going to be. But one, I remember one of the things that. But even that, just to close the loop on that, when you, this was the conversation we were having the first time we met. It was like okay, yeah, and, but then you went. You, you started talking about a movie that was like a well, digression. I want to right. talk about that in a second, right, but right. Okay. specifically with this, because back to that same conversation. Mm -hmm. 
one of the things you said that we didn't realize, again, having somebody that you respect and who has done a lot of work in this field that we kind of feel like, again, like we're kind of like posing our way into. And I think that's a, that, that's how anybody who's kind of come up on YouTube feels uh, because there still is this, from a critical standpoint and sort of industry standpoint, there is this, is this actually legitimate? You know, there's still this struggle for legitimacy. But when you, you analyzed it and you said, you take these left turns, but your characters are always kind of just like shrugging shrugging those left turns off, you never make a big deal out of it. It's like you face this thing without any sort of fanfare at all. It just seems like, oh, this is natural that we would suddenly be here and this is where we would be going. And I think that there's a number of reasons, mostly just just instinct and it's unintentional that we did. I think most of it was just like, oh, we just think this is really funny and it'll be, it wasn't really well thought out to be like, oh, and then when we go there, we won't have much of a reaction to it. it well, was we thought hard about it, but it wasn't. I don't know that that was calculated. Yeah, that mm. particular element wasn't calcu wasn't calculated. But then we go back and look at everything we've done. We're like, oh, you're right. We always approach things in that way. The gloss over the absurd. Right. The characters aren't phased by the increasing absurdities that you that you, that right. you surround yourself with. Right? right. Or any situation, any increasingly absurd situation you put yourself in, doesn't necessarily. Of, you know, or correspondingly affect your character in some way. Like you're willing to accept the new circumstance, like like instantaneous. Yeah, right? and we always want that new circumstance to come from a very a relatable circumstance, which I think that, which is what Link you were about to talk about, which is when you began to tell the story about uh, what is the movie? Uh, the discreet charm of the bourgeoisie. Yes, like Louis Bunuel. Yeah. And, yeah, like, yeah, and you just because you were talking about left turns, and, and that and has you, some of the greatest left turns in movies ever. And I, I was amazed when I saw that movie again. I, I don't know what I was doing watching this movie when I was, you know, <laughs> I guess in high school. So by that time, I was like, oh, I want to be cool and intellectual, so I'm going right. to watch it, cool and intellectual things that are above my, um, you know, intellectual abilities. Um, and but and what so happened? Wa what was the digression? Well, there, well, there's it's about a you know it's about this kind of. Uh, like this aristocracy of characters like these this like I think they're I think they're related in some way I think there's a husband and wife but this collection of aristocrats who go on this crazy journey and there's these constant digressions like I think the one I told you about was when once again I hope my memory serves me correctly because I'm sure now that I'm saying it out loud on a podcast someone's gonna go it's not even right um, which is actually okay with me too I guess because if that's what I've it only matters what we what we what um, we think well what the application was <laughs> yeah what the application yeah. was but I think they're at dinner and some waiter comes up and starts telling them a story and you know you cut away to that waiter's story and you think okay this is going to be like a two minute story and it's going to have a little beginning middle and end and then he's going to you know we're going to cut back to our main characters but you don't for like a, um, I think almost a half or it seemed like a half hour uh -huh. like to the point where you're in another journey entire right, on right. another journey entirely. And then you're, I was kind of shocked when we returned to the restaurant, right? Where the waiter says, "Oh, and thank you for listening to my story," and walks off to take their order. And then you're back with our main character. And when you told us that story, we don't even have to communicate about things like this. Like we know, we love that kind of thing. So when you're telling that story, we're both already thinking, "Okay, that's happening in an episode." <laughs> and when you're dealing with a 22-minute comedy, we're basically already thinking, "Okay, so we're going to have an episode where someone's story." Becomes the episode, and that's where the whole right you episode, know, right. The, the, episode Lucy, the Lucy episode episode six uh, episode right. six came from, uh, which is I don't know you know and we haven't seen any post we haven't see, we haven't been in the editing bay yet so well, actually right. we saw a little sequence yeah, of that so one we because that. we didn't know if we needed to pick up a shot right. that is and then preemptively we saw my favorite episode but I don't you know I'm 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 know, withholding judgment at this point I know it's and it's, we didn't need to pick up the shot no. I didn't think so. So there we go. We yeah, saw that thing. Right. You didn't see it. You didn't see the little sequence either. No, but you I, didn't? I, no, I didn't. Pretty exciting. It's kind of rude of me not to show you. But when I heard that everyone was happy with it, I was like, well, I'm not gonna care. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other, because then the other, uh, the other similar idea that we had, which was, can we do an episode where we don't speak to each other? <laughs> 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 and when we told Michael and Sievert that, uh, Michael and Sievert, who were our, our, our head writers on the show and, and showrunners and kind of uh, along with us ran the writer's room, you could kind of see the fear in their eyes when we said we want to do sure. an episode where we don't speak to each other. Uh, and of course, it, it, it's not necessarily uh, completely not speaking to each other, but it takes not speaking to each other about as far as you can take yeah, it. Yeah, in both cases. Like it becomes many things. 
Right. And it right, does. It becomes it, many, many things. It actually became many things that we then had to rewrite because they were too many things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then right, you, that's true. Yeah, you and Stevie busted it and you were like, guys, act three, that whole thing right, with the- change. Yeah, that's not, that can't be a thing. Of, of the many <laughs> things it can be, it, that is one it can't be. And I think we made I mean, an improvement. I mean, we can say, well, I mean, there, there, it, was a, it was a parody of American Ninja Warrior and some right. other reality competition shows. Which, which, incidentally. And it was, but uh, like with a crazy twist and weird constraints. Well, well yeah, so we, well, and, and stuntmen. This is one mm -hmm. of those things where we throw ideas up on a, a board and then when episode ideas get filled in and we see that we've got two ideas that we wanted to do left over and there's one episode left, we put them into the same episode. That's all that will happen. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was a bit. We wanna have a reality show parody of like American Ninja Warrior and we wanna have an episode where we don't speak to each other so we originally put them together. Which incidentally, then when we were shooting the, the uh, you know, our flashback episode, every morning in Santa Clarita, we passed the ultimate Beastmaster. Right. Yeah, we That's did. what that huge thing was, which was another one of our references, the right. Netflix Sly Stallone produced, you know, American Ninja Warrior ripoff. Um, so what you're saying is we could have shot we could have just on their actual set. We should have gone down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we would have been fined. Because you almost got fined just wandering I, around. Yes, I did. I almost got fined, and it was I, I almost was fined, and it was not funny. Either. It wasn't like I was almost. Was fined. it a guy on a horse? Because there were horses around. It was, it was. It was the modern version of a horse, um, in that it was a gator. It was a low oh, torque, very yes. expensive. I asked him how much. It, how, I was like, how much is one of the, you know? Because you you're try to divert him from the fine with. Uh, Let's talk yeah, about your gator. Yeah, like <laughs> how much? How much does one of those things run you? You know, like. <laughs> How much does that cost? <laughs> You're backing away slowly. Yeah, yeah. He's like twenty grand. I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's an expensive oh, piece yeah. of equipment. Yes, I was almost fine. My mom, my mom has one of those. Really? Oh, she's a high roller. Ah, oh, she is. Well, it's pretty low to the ground. Yeah. So we yeah, were at, her at husband, this. Actually. We were at the, uh, the the movie ranch, basically. Right. You're not allowed to wander, and wander is the technical term. Right. It wasn't that's not just a word I'm using to describe yeah. it. It's wander. That's what it says you, on the sign. That's right. You cannot wander, and mm -hmm. we I needed to scout out that location. Scout the location of the opening shot of that you know of that flashback and so I wandered I just didn't I just I had to go and wander and I didn't really think about it it wasn't like I was like oh I'm gonna be you know I'm gonna be contrary and you know and wander you know, I'm gonna be rebellious and you know flaunt 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 it flaunt, flaunt it flaunt the rules is that I don't think that's flaunt I think is the word yeah. I'm looking for yeah um, the rules I wasn't I was just we were working quickly and I needed to go scout. Yeah, right. so I did and there was a you know I come down the mountain and there's a guy with that classic you're in trouble smile you know the classic like I'm gonna find you yeah it, yeah mm. like that and he didn't have to say anything because he's got the smile on his face that says you're in trouble. And I'm like, what am I? Like, what? this is, what? Like, but you, really? got, you got off, right? Well, there was a 24 hour discussion about it actually, because he, oh, I wow. was super nice. I was like, you know, I, I just, you know, I was like, hey, listen, I'm sorry. Like right off the bat, I'm coming down the mountain and I'm like, I am sorry. I, I, I know I'm not supposed to be wandering. And you know that I'm not supposed to be wandering because you're here to catch me. Like you <laughs> caught me. Right, yeah. Like, I don't know how you caught me, uh. but clearly, you know, I mean, I guess I could have said, hey, I got permission, but there was no radio from locations to yeah, them, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, so they knew whatever, mm -hmm. so. I mean, this is a big source of revenue. This is like a small town cop catching it. This is like a speed trip. It was $100. Right? Yeah, right. That's not small. Yeah. That's $100 mm -hmm. cash for walking, you know, for 200 yards yeah. Yeah, off the, the, you know, the designated area. And that's on you because it was on the call sheet. <laughs> I'm not paying you $100. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and on the bathroom door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was and every, everywhere. Yeah, it was everywhere. I did read it on the call sheet. I don't know what, I don't usually read the call sheets, but I read that and I was like, kind of laughed to myself and I was like, who would, how would, What's that like mean? that whatever happened. Who's gonna wander? Right. And but you know, we almost, you know, where you guys did, remember we were in the riverbed? I don't know how much we can describe, but when that very last shot, yeah, we ran, yeah. all ran to the riverbed. Yeah. That was almost a company fine. That was oh. like an en masse wander. Oh, oh really? Because yeah, because we were losing light and the location we chose was not gonna work because it was 200, it was, on, it was, it was, we were losing light and it was, yeah. the, the place we had, we had chosen for that was under trees. Got it was all dark. under the canopies. Yeah, couldn't do it. So we we're like, oh, and so then we just ran over to the riverbed, and so there was a massive scramble. And then y y I don't know, you guys were maybe and a changed. Bunch of you guys were changing because you had to get into oh, the yeah. change. And right. I went over to the same guy. I, I hope his name's Pete because that's my memory. <laughs> and I said, we need to wander over there at the creek bridge. <laughs> like, and he was like, look like looks like you already have. Oops, mm -hmm. Pete. Mm -hmm. I know, mm -hmm. and for I was Pete's like, sake. and I apologize for that. I really do. I'm not trying <laughs> Again, to. Again, I'm. 
Now tell me again how much that gator is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is one of the? Can we still talk about that? Yeah, and you know, I you, you know, got out of it twice though. Well, the, and the, this time I, I yeah, because the first time yes, I got out of it twice. The first time um, I could see being like the hey, I'm just going to make this all in good fun did not work mm-hmm. because I was saying it was 24 hours that, you know, they came to me later and said, you still might be fine. Because I was trying to be all jocular. Like when I came to mom, I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I yeah. <laughs> wandered. <laughs> That's all just a joke, isn't it? I'm going back to our location. So sorry. Yeah. That did not fly with that guy because mm-hmm. he went on to maybe find me. And so then the second approach was to be very serious about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very serious and professional. Listen, right. I'm sorry. And penitent. I, I, I was. Like and I, I, no, no joking One around. knee, both knees. The maybe. whole thing. Like not... Hey, I'm going to make light of this stupid rule by, hey, aren't we just friends and isn't this a funny rule? That's, it's right, not. Right, right. It's not funny. And so then, yes, I worked him in that way and that worked. I was like, listen. But both of them. Yeah. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, no, you no, no, no. Both of them, great shots. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. You got oh, that establishing yeah, yeah, yeah. shot. That was the first wander when you got the establishing, right? Yep. Or you were looking for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's where you guys come down. Oh, that's one the, of the with, biggest with the zoom shots. Lens. Yeah, with that th- big, big, giant lens. Yeah, with the cla- the classic. Oh, yeah, that's the, the classic. That's the biggest shot of the whole thing, maybe. Probably. It's and, that. Then, and then you got the night. Well, uh, I mean, it, let's see. The creek bed closer. The creek bed closer was really that was, good. Cause the, the, that, was an, that was like an act two closer type thing. Cause right, it, yeah. Because it was turned out to be a location that looks really crazy and almost like on another planet. Yeah. Like it was very craggy. Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, it was very Star Trek. you like, yeah. And so then when you guys revealed yourselves in yeah. that location. Yeah, we were very down and out. Yeah, yeah. We were up the creek. Right. <laughs> Am I right? It's true. A very dry creek. Now, one of the That's things true. that we were talking about was, you know, we, the Link and I carpooled together uh, out to our location in Pomona. <laughs> where we shot most of our stuff out in Pomona. And so we would we'd talk on the way and talk on the way back and you know, it kind of hit us a few weeks in that we were like, now w- what's different than season one? Because we, it, I feel like we're working harder. That's, they were like, I just feel a lot more tired. I'm, <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember coming home in season one, even though we were working 12 hour days and, and telling my wife, I was like, this acting thing is nice, this is, these guys got it easy. I was like, this acting thing is like, <laughs> you know, I was really nervous about it, but you know, I'm not saying I'm necessarily good at it, but I'm saying it's not, it's not, uh, it doesn't really tire out, tire you out unless you're doing like a revenant thing and mm-hmm. you're like, right, DiCaprio like jumping off cliffs and stuff like that. But Which we did none of right. But we were trying to figure out what is it, what is it about the season? We're like, well, maybe it's you know. Maybe this was pretty ambitious for 33 days. Yeah. You know, so season one, 29 day shoot, hmm. 14 minute episodes. Uh, uh, going to 22 minute episodes, we're going up at least 50% in content, but we're also, I think, scenes per minute, you know, scenes per episode or whatever, way up. Like just the pacing. And that was something that came, you know, that was a kind of Michael and Sievert pushing us to keep the pacing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, more so than we did in season one. It's great. So, gr- all this is great for the final product, but uh, extremely ambitious for the parameters we had in terms of time and money. Right. Yeah. And you, you, there's no way you could have fully appreciated what we were throwing you into when we started this I, thing. I did not fully appreciate. <laughs> but you, it, although you did mention it several times, I, I, I did. You, <laughs> this is what I would see. This is what I would hear in, on in your voice and see on your face. There was a. You would say things like now. This is really ambitious, but then I could hear in your voice, you're like, but of course, I mean, we're gonna get more days, we're gonna get more money. You you believed that that was gonna happen. I, I did. And that did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Sorry, right. sorry about that. Yeah. Well, maybe not necessarily more days, but I didn't actually realize that not a single minute um, of overtime would be allowed. And that's not an exaggeration either when I say oh, not oh, a yeah. single minute. I actually mean- it's pretty hardcore. Not a single minute, and I actually, I, as you could tell, rebelled against that greatly for the first week or two because I didn't, I actually couldn't conceive of a world right. where one single minute of overtime um, could be the collapse of the season. And so I was like, oh, I have to adjust um, because I have no, there is no fail safe. I, I, even right. an extra 20 minutes, say, would be, you There's know, no buffer. enjoyable, no buffer. And so, so I had to adjust to that, um, I think. Um, uh, but I, I, what the thing that I always keep in mind um, when I'm doing anything, and certainly with this show, is um, we have to achieve it. I know it's kind of an obvious thing to say. We have to achieve it because no one's going to know nor care 
mm-hmm. what we faced, nor uh, tried. You know what we tried to what what goals we set once it's right. in when it, once it starts getting cut and it turns into episodes. No one cares. No one cares. We could say we literally this entire thing took place on the moon. We actually f- were the first you know movie production or television production to actually fly to the moon, create an atmosphere on the moon, and then shoot a comedy series on the moon, and then we came back. People would be like, "Oh, great! It's yeah, it's not so funny." Right, <laughs> like, you know, so it's yeah. like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You have to achieve it, and um, and so then um, you know, I just, I just, I always keep that in mind so that we can, um, you know, we can try and you know create something great every day. And I thought that you guys, I don't. Know, can you compliment? Cause, uh, can we compliment you on it? Your oh, own podcast is that please, a thing without yeah, it just you, seeming you too obsequious? No right. one's, no one's done it before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys are super prepared. You know, like you got, I, it's good you drove together uh, <laughs> you know, to the set because um, there's no, I mean, we, you guys were putting away two and three pages in an hour sometimes, you know, and that's just not a thing I experience in other sh- shoots and other shows because, you know, you have either have a little bit more time or whatever, but if you guys didn't actually know everything you were going to do pretty much all the time, it, nothing, we wouldn't have made it. And so that's really a testament to you, your hard work. I mean, I was, I was amazed. And that's why I kept saying the, the last couple of days, like, they're, <laughs> they're going to bail us out of this one. We have 10 <laughs> seconds. They're going to bail us. Don't worry that we got this. As long as I put up the cameras, then we'll get something because because you guys were ready for it. And that was, that was imp- I was impressed by that. I was yeah, impressed that you were ready for it. Sometimes it was, it was fun to know that we just had 10 minutes and we were going to try to get two setups. So we had one take it this thing from each setup. So then it was like, you know, cause I mean, it's it, to like, to to stay so aggressively on point. It's like, okay, I'm not gonna, I can't flub a line and I, I wanna hit these marks type thing. Right, like, you, you that was fun, a, a, a few times that was fun. Right, I mean, you <laughs> actually couldn't flub a line. Like that's how, that we were in situations where right, you, we actually, gotta, you actually couldn't flub a well, line, Well, and I think that's, we, we talk about that all the time and I, th- I think this is, this is just rooted in being in, in being execu- executive producers and creators on the show, and kind of feeling the weight of like when we think when we say there's no overtime, it's like we're saying there's no overtime, right? And so right. it's not us against them. We have to kind of put ourselves on mm. on both sides of the line, and so that we always say, "Don't be the problem, be the solution," right? right. Where I think right. a lot a lot of actors, n- you know, just almost instinctively, it's like. They're gonna they're gonna be the problem, right? That's they're, somebody you super because they have super to do, talented and because they get, have to do good work. Yeah, they, and have, they to, have to right. they have to only they have to do their thing really well. Well, and, right. there's a, and there's a natural give and take, right? And they should and you know if you're really great at that, you've earned the right to create a ripple effect of problems that from a as producers you start to appreciate how it ripples through everything, and then it costs X number of dollars. And so we know that intimately. So I, 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 it's not that I'm saying that I would think normal actors would be annoying. I haven't worked with that many, but yeah, we never, we never feel like we're, we're actors. We're something else that then we have, we have to act to pull it off. That's part. We're of acting it. because we have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's I, I, th- I feel like that's what's like. Well, we got to make this. Well, we got to be in it. Which that means we have to act as well. Oh, okay. We got to figure out how to do that. But we definitely can't be the the source of the problem. Well, it's not problem. that we don't want to act. No, no, it's not, no. I mean, we want to act in it, but we want, but I, we're never fully actors. I, I think with the pressure of time, we, we were always thinking about three other things at the same time. The final One of product. Which is how quickly do I need to get this? Don't be the problem. The whole thing, the whole thing is what is in view most of the time. Yeah. And acting is a part of it, right? Finishing on time is a part of it. Sure, but you have to be good sports too because there were times where, you know, because actors, you know, you need space to kind of do it right and do it well, right? So there were yeah, times I where, mean, there were... despite the fact that you had your executive producer hats on, sometimes it's just, it's just like life isn't fair, guys. Like not, not, <laughs> life isn't fair to any of us, you know. Right, like right. we have to just put it away. So that was good that you guys were good sports about it because it is still something that's important and you want to do it well and it should be funny or it should be good and you don't and it also can't be wasted. You know, it can't not work. So and I, you know, and it, I mean, part of the fun of acting is discover is discovery, and sometimes that doesn't happen until you're actually doing it. I that's mean, right. I mean, we're so calculated and we we work so hard. At every every at every step that we were intimately acquainted, and we had certain expectations of ourselves and each other and everybody else in the scene, and even you. And 
So we, it, it's more of we got to execute what we expect, but there's some, there's a lot of fun in discovering something like a different angle or how to tie two shots together or a, uh, a nuance to an accent or, um, you know, or just perform in a different way. Right. Like, oh, this is this this is a lot funnier than we thought um, because I'm crying now. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be crying. Or I thought crying would be funny, but now it's not. So I think there, you know, because it was so aggressive, I certainly missed that experience of like figuring it out. Because what would happen, like if I'm to overgeneralize the thing, we would work really hard on a scene, you get it done, you get it done, and then immediately, like immediately be like, all right, next scene. And then we would go and it would, it would you know, you'd physically move over just the the actors and producers and you and we would rehearse, and that was a fun moment. But it was it was very high pressure because mm -hmm. you did there wasn't much time allotted for it. But the rehearsal was the time when you figure you you block it out. Where are you going to step? Where are you going to walk? What are you going to say? How are we going to say it? How we're we're saying the lines and we're seeing who laughs at what in the room. But we're not even given a full performance yet. We're given because you want to save it. You give like a half performance, but you got to give enough to like have proof of concept or that something, make sure something's not broken or needs to be fixed. And then, but it's when everybody's making decisions, like DP's making lighting decisions, mood decisions. You're making all these cut angle camera decisions, directorial decisions, where uh, blocking all this stuff. Everybody's making all these instantaneous decisions, pop, 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 all at once. And it's like, okay. And we need to be done with it, but it is <laughs> so that we can just shoot it. Right. But it. But that is a fun moment because I'm trying to think of an example. But you don't really know if it's going to work. It, like that's a big moment. Or when you have someone come in, it's like Garrett Morris, a legend, How about comes that guy? in yeah. from the first season of Saturday Night Live, and like I knew this. You know, I have images of this guy in my brain from like the earliest memories of comedy. It's like this yeah. guy's a part of it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he strolls onto the set and the first time you see him in action is this rehearsal when it's like, all right, is he going 50%? Is he going 90%? And this is true of everybody. Right. And so then we're kind of, we are, you're assessing like, all right, what's he gonna give us? Is he, go I mean, is it gonna be great? Is it gonna be horrible? Is it gonna be somewhere in the middle? So you're like discovering all that, knowing that, you know, 20 minutes later, after you've rehearsed, they bring in the cameras and they set up the lights and everything else and the props are set and everything. You're gonna do it, no matter what. It's like it's like you've jumped off the cliff and you better hope that squirrel suit unfurls. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, I mean it was, this was, this is all, the, the whole process is, is obviously something that you've been involved in for a long time, but the limitations. How much did we mess it up for you? The limitations <laughs> that you you uh, usually don't have these limitations, like because you 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 did us you did us a solid in saying yes, you'll work on this based on your level of experience and the and the size of the projects you've done before. So you, you talk a little bit about like recognizing those those limitations and like how that's is that changed the way you think about directing at all? Oh yeah, I mean to me, well the the, the main thing I'll, it, I had to remember was to continue was to have fun. Like I'd be, I'd be in a situation where it's like, you know, I have to change the way my pro I have to change the way I work in order to make sure that we execute properly, and um, mm -hmm. then I'd get all mad at myself or mad at everyone, and then I'd have to realize that this is deeply crazy what we're doing, and therefore it should only be fun all the time. Otherwise, why st even stand where I'm standing? So I had to, that was first. So like, okay, just remember uh -huh. that this all should be kind of fun. Um, I mean, on a technical level, I, I I started thinking about lenses differently, you know, because mm -hmm. what is the best frame if you don't get two of them? You know, if you don't get two sizes, what's the best frame in any particular situation? I know it's probably mm -hmm. this is where this is what I'm about to say is like the cure for insomnia for most of your listeners. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would give say, it to me. I'm that, interested in this. <laughs> well, lenses are a big thing. You know, like what you know how you know, when you get to cover things and you get when you know you have you know say you know three hours to shoot a three page scene versus forty five minutes. Say you know how mm -hmm. best to cover it and and you know what are the ways in which. You know, you know, when you, when you have that much time, you can shoot it many, many ways, and you get lots of coverage, and you get lots of angles, and you know. So I had to figure out how to kind of efficiently shoot something and still make it good, and still make it funny, or at least funny in the lens. You guys were 
you guys were funny and great and so I had to figure out you know you know how to how to best capture it because you can't be too wide you can't be too tight it has to kind of, you have to yeah. you know tell the story visually so that i learned I, i'd say i learned some stuff <laughs> i learned some stuff <laughs> you know i learned some stuff you know gags are gags though to me that didn't change you could probably see my, my like i always got a lot more you know i don't know whatever intense when we were doing gags as opposed to scenes because see when you guys are you know when the floor is yours and you guys are doing character work and being funny and and it's in dialogue you can cover that a bunch of different ways it's going to be great right when mm -hmm. you're doing gags are really specific they right. need very specific shots if you mm -hmm. don't have those specific shots the gags don't work right period so i would always get more kind of intense you probably notice when we were shooting gags because they have to be shot properly. and we had a lot of them <laughs> you we had a lot of gags Fourteen thousand, i think i think 14 Fourteen hundred and seventy gags, um, so and it was mean. great. But that was great. So those have to be shot well. I didn't, you know, those just have to be shot well. So th speaking those of which, shall we talk about the Texas switch? <laughs> yes, because to me that's that's like that's my favorite. That's, that's like the vanity bumper sticker of Buddy System season two is Texas switch. Texas take, switch. You take the vowels out and you make it into a. Uh, what is it a um, a, val a, a vanity license plate. Yeah, BG, right. Just T X S W. S W C H. S W C H. You could put the T in there. Yeah, you could. I have to go I back to what I just said for a second and say, please cut that all out. What? I don't know. Well, because it seems very boring, doesn't it? Like, it mm. seems. No. Really we, the, no. The mythical beasts, man. They Choosing care. the lens. They, Ugh, they care about so stuff. boring. They, I think they care about it. Really? Yeah. They're all they're all creative minded people. Yeah. Well, then they're maybe and ahead aspiring of them. directors. Many of them. And Oof. current directors. Ooh. Huh. We got it all, <laughs> baby. All right. I had never good. heard the term Texas switch until you said it four thousand times. <laughs> <Texas>. <laughs> but it's our fault because it's it's there's a lot of prop gags. Right. So it's explain it. Okay. So the Texas switch to me again because I still don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then there's the, remember we there's also the Hollywood it in which is a you yeah know, which is a kind of variation of the Texas switch. Um, Give, think, let's use a specific example as a case okay. study. Do you remember a Texas switch that we can talk about? We can talk about any of them. I don't care. Hmm. Um. Uh. Well, yeah. So, okay, Texas switch. We we pick got, any scene. We, we, we had one. Uh. This this is a, one of the situations where we had a, we had a gag we were trying to get with mm -hmm. the soup. Right. So we've got the box that has the food in it, and I bring it in. And I, I didn't think that's the one we ever wanted to talk about, though. And I do my, I just do because my, it was so I, hard to shoot. Well, but I treat it very uh, right, you know, roughly, and we set it down. And you open it up, and it's a perfectly steaming hot bowl of soup. Right, liquid in a bowl that can't sustain being flipped around in a cardboard box. So I come in with an empty cardboard box, set it down, Texas switch, bring in the one with the with the soup in it, and open it up. That's a Texas switch. That's right. But right. it, it just means that you keep rolling, but then in the edit, it can mean anything. It right. means you cut to another shot. Yeah, right. You cut to another shot, and then you when you cut back, the, the thing that you wanted switched in, well, it's switched, switched it's in like, the thing it's, that switched it's, out. It's, I guess in like a theatrical setting, it's like, hey, look at me over here, while some stagehand over here replaces oh. mine with his, and now there's blood in that. Don't do that. Cause yeah, it's like a visual sleight of hand, if you will. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we had to Hollywood in the soup, right? Which which was also a Texas switch. You know, I'm a little, bit, I'm a, someone out there will have to kind of clarify because there is Hollywooding something in, which what is also I, kind I, of I a Texas switch. Hollywood, Hollywood is just a janky way to like, or like a, like the non technical way to get something in its place. Right. Right? Like or that, that could be a, like a, some sort of lighting got, shield. Yeah, when you've got that like, someone's just holding like a bounce. Put on a you're going to let a grip hold the bounce. Are you gonna let? Are you gonna put it on a C stand? Right. So if the grip is holding the bounce, they're Hollywooding it in. That's right. what I always thought. Because hmm. I think and it I means learned that, that like from Ben in Hollywood. Yeah. In Hollywood, you can afford to just have a person hold that as opposed to prop <laughs> it up against something, <laughs> right? But in Texas, <laughs> you got to switch it out. Yeah. yeah. Right. In Texas, so yeah. it's a it's it's so Hollywood Hollywood in something is a broad term, but Texas right. switch is a is a is a narrower term which we used many times we for, did. I agree. for prop for gags. Yeah. And Hollywood it in has too many syllables and it also is not as fun to say as Texas Switch, right. which mm -hmm. has which yeah. has a very clear like, you know, idea behind it, right? Which everyone gets instantly. Like you get what that is. Let's do that, you know, like right, right. away. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But now the real fun starts. I mean, we're going to have our rap party here yep. in just a little bit. Yep. And then uh you're going to get in there 
in the in the editing bay. Yeah, very I, soon. I looked at episode two today. Oh, you did? Oh. Almost my notes. Almost all my no, well, my notes are being done in episode two right now. Oh, really? All right. Yes. Well, tell us because all right, oh, it, it's fine if you say this because our expectation. I mean, whenever we see first edits and we try to like we try to protect who sees it so that we both don't see it at the same time, so someone can have a preserved first look at something that's further along. Is that how you do it? Like yeah. you got you won't look at it at the same time. We we, we try to ideally have a, no. somebody wants to have a fresh perspective, yeah. Okay. To be like, okay, I thought this. Let me see if he thinks this. But we're used to first cuts of anything there being that let down. Like, oh, I I we, feel disappointed. We've never been encouraged by a first cut of anything. Of anything. Any sketch, music, video. So it's okay if you tell us that we're right al- now. We're always like, mm. How did you actually feel? Uh, well, I have that problem too. Like I'll say, like, what was the point of any of this? You know, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's not. But it's not personal, right? It's right, not. It's yeah, anything totally I've ever seen. It. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally say, you know, it. I'll make a sandwich and feel that way. You know, like, <laughs> I'll make a sandwich. I'll look at my sandwich and I'll say, well, that's not in my. You know, like my idea of this whole operation was that some perfect thing was going to emerge, and right. now it's just a sandwich. So can somebody yeah. Texas switch in a better sandwich? Yeah, yeah like yeah. you have to get past that, and yeah. and yeah, so you have. That's all just. Yeah, that's all just stuff like in your head. So you have to. Just so think, what right? happened? <laughs> so How much of it you saw the I, majority I of episode? I really enjoyed episode two. I thought it was really really funny. And first, I looked to make sure that I got all the shots I need to make it. You know, like I, I live in fear of that. Right? Like, oh, we better have this shot because to me, this shot is what's going to be crucial to mm-hmm. you know making it good. So I, I'm out with the editor. I'm like, go. I'm always like, go there, go there, go there. I want to look just stream. I just oh, kinda, you were in. You were over his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I went over there and I just said, I, I want to see all these beats and I want to see what shots I have just to see if these After crucial seeing shots. the cut. Like yeah. you sat there and watched it. Yeah, and then I was like, I want to know that we have all these crucial shots to that to me will make it 40,000 times funnier. And when most of those shots I got, I felt I felt good about that. And then before, yeah. you know, performance is good and it and it make, you know, cuz I'm like, does this make sense to this do I Is understand? this the Michael McDonald episode? No, no. This is this is the Glenn episode. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. like with that crazy day when we had 14 seconds to shoot that big set piece at the end. Like, is that going to work? Right. You know, like, yeah. how is that? That's the whole point of the oh, episode. A, that's that's the whole big episode. deal. Like, if that doesn't work, the episode, uh, oh. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yes, that was great. I was like, let's go to the, I was like, watch the end scene first. Like, let's, oh, you let's did? work backwards. Watch the scene you're most nervous about first. Yeah, and then, like, there were things that really work. I don't know. I, well, I can't really say things, right? You're not supposed to say things. Well, you, but can, you can indicate so that we know. The diner? Can I say diner? Yeah, yeah Okay, yeah, so yeah. that scene is... Yeah, that whole sequence from the moment you enter the diner to that end of and that where phrase, we go. and then where you go. That's oh, really? all. Okay. Just oh yeah, tremendous. And that was a, that was a difficult day. Yes, it was a difficult day yes. getting what we needed. Yes, it was. Tre- yeah, it was tremendously difficult, and it oh, is okay. tremendous. The basement <laughs> keep stuff, tremendous. amazing. Oh yeah, uh, amazing. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. Wow. Okay. It's 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 yeah. It's extra- okay. it's extraordinary. <laughs> Whoa! It's extraordinary. extraordinary. Yes, it's extraordinary. And the diner itself has a, is kind of the, the the whole setup to that is pretty extraordinary too. What about my pants joke? Is that still in? Pants joke. Putting well, on your know, pants I'll, one. Yes, like that's in. Yes, it is. That's you in. didn't cut that yet. No, no, no. I'm no, fond of that. Cu- I did not try not cut to that. cut it. And uh, we're not going to. Are we going to be short? Are, are we good? Are we good on that length? episode's good on time? Yeah, I mean, I, most of them are long. That's actually closest. Okay. That episode is closest to time. Okay. So yeah, if you cut a lot, then you'll be short. Okay. Because it's closest to. time. Because that was the thing. That was the thing I was worried about. Because you know, uh, our AD Jill kept coming back and saying, "These, it's, this is all just too ambitious. We're not going to make our days. You got to get. You guys got to cut more stuff." And so, you know, Michael and Sievert would go and make proposed cuts. And pages and pages and pages continue to come out of the script as we moved along, mm-hmm. and we just kept thinking, "Oh, we got to be too short. We got to be too short." But okay, we're not going to. No, too you, short. most of the episodes are probably long. Okay, which is That's great. Good. Um, yeah, I mean, in that way, um, it was and I'm re- so excited. By the way, I mean, it's these are proper episodes versus season one was just like webisodes that made up a movie, which was I'm I'm proud of what it is, but as an experience for the audience, I'm super, I mean, we got, uh, what do you predict is your favorite episode? I mean, certainly the one the one we talked about, the one that might be your favorite episode is certainly up there. Episode seven. Yeah, episode So like the big, six, six, yeah. episode six, yeah. Six is, is up there. Um, People are gonna love it because it's such a, such a left turn. It's such a, I mean, it's it's crazy different. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a period piece. Yeah. Yeah, but the, where you're not talking to each other, that one has that's interesting. 
That's pretty. I mean, where it goes is so it ju- it just exponent. It takes these exponential leaps, <laughs> like these exponential leaps. Yeah. Especially you know like the to me what made what yeah. what made me think maybe it was going to be my favorite episode is when the character Dylan proposes makes that proposal. He comes out of the bathroom right. and it's like, "What? Well, hold on, wait." <laughs> what you talk about right. a left turn. It's right. He's like, "Okay, I see this in a way that not only no one else in the whole universe could see, but certainly not the audience." And <laughs> and I see it very clearly and that's going right. to be the next move and that's a great move. <laughs> it's a pretty great move. <laughs> so that one uh, I'm they interested in. They don't know in. what we're talking no, about. They but don't. Gotta so, be no, so they can wait. No, they can wait. Right. So, yeah. The, and the I, I tend to forget about the music because it was like, but I mean, that reggae thing we shot on the last yeah. day looks so great. Yeah. I mean, it's that's gonna be that's gonna be cool. Yeah. 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 I, 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 my hope is that when you when yeah. you watch an episode, it's one of those. I think it's. I want people to feel like when they finish watching an episode, they can, they think back to the beginning of the episode, and it feels like how we felt when we were shooting. Like whenever we were shooting, it was like, I remember what we shot at the beginning of this day and it doesn't feel like the same day because we're shooting so much and like we're working so hard. But even from a viewing experience, I think story-wise that'll translate. It's like at the end of an episode, they'll think about the first of the episode and be like, that can't be the same episode. Yeah. And then they'll be like, I remember there was a song like in like the middle of the episode, but that feels like a different episode too. It's like. right. Yeah, uh, I think we take people on a on It'd a great a journey, big adventure, and I'm interested to see how the characters that you guys created, how they evolve over the eight episodes. Yeah, was, yeah. In terms of like, especially because we block shot the whole yeah. thing. And I, <laughs> I have no. Clue. Yeah, like what your characters believe at the beginning and what your characters believe at the end. Uh, I trust the writing. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I we trust tried, the writing too. We yeah. try hard, yeah, but that like was from all a taken into from an acting standpoint, it was it. it was difficult to plug <laughs> back in. Like we shot all the scenes in the dining room. So it's like the call sheet would be like episode one, episode four, episode eight, episode four, eight, one, and we'd shoot it in that order. Yep. But I mean, as much as we, we do change. Yeah, I think you guys um, do change. Yeah. We do change. Physically. But at least our accents don't change because then yeah. that would have been really bad. Right, I think right except that for that been. one day. Oh, oh, new character on the fly. Oh yeah, that was that <laughs> you was You heard fun. about that, you weren't there, but you heard oh, yeah, it yeah, subsequently. Yeah. I was yeah. getting changed. Yes. I was like, oh yes. gosh. That was a good move. That was a good. It work. was a good move. I mean, it's good to have people here. I mean, here's here's the 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 story. We both, Rhett and I, both had characters that we were playing independently that were basically going to be cut together uh, at a certain sequence. Um, and we kind of conceptualized the character that I played, and then yours, where I wasn't in the room for that. I wasn't in the room when you conceptualized the Cajun guy, but I. But, but the all, Southern gentleman. We thought I, that they I thought were, it was supposed to be a Southern gentleman. Yeah, we, and we thought that they were different enough. And you were they, to be a Cajun guy. They they weren't. But then when we rehearsed it, like the more that you were the Cajun guy, I was like, I feel like this is messing with my mind. I and I can't be here, so I left. I couldn't listen to you doing your your character anymore because it was messing with my character. So then I Sorry. went off the whole time you were shooting it, and I was like rehearsing the freaking. Southern gentleman. Meanwhile, I didn't look like a southern gentleman. They made me look amazing and very funny. But you never le- that it, character it, never left the East Coast. And that's a lesson. Right. That was a lesson learned that I, I should have I should have assessed that the moment the I North looked. The Northeast Coast. The Northeast Coast. That's right. Like yes. once you put once you put on hair and makeup and costume, like that's the moment. Like you got to reassess everything in the mirror. And that was a mistake I made. I'll own that. But I think the thing was. So then I was off rehearsing this southern gentleman. And then I show up after you left, and I knew in my heart of hearts that it what I that I didn't think it was. I thought it was too close, but I I wasn't willing to say anything because I didn't want to be the problem. And then Steve, you weren't there, so Stevie and Steve were over at the at the monitor with their backs turned to me, watching. I'm watching them watch me on the <laughs> monitor out of the corner of my eye. That's so true. I'm I'm performing to the right of lens, and over here I can see their their backs, and they're like. Stop, stop. You know something's coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stevie and Steve are huddling. Yeah. Stevie, Stevie's and Stevie, like Stevie was the one who called. She, oh yeah, she yeah, clocked I heard that she so will, fast. And she, oh my god, she, she, she's and she's learned how to. Uh, she know she knows when she can come in and correct correct. It's course. a precarious yeah. spot. It we, is. We depend on to, her for that. Yeah, she I mean, had to make it, a big. That was a bold move. Right. It was the last day, but y- the two of you conferred, and you were like, the characters are too similar. They sound too similar, 
And I was like, well, they're from the same place. They knew each other years back. <laughs> Please, <laughs> accept that. Please, <laughs> yeah. And then y you were like, yeah, he doesn't look like he talks. And you guys were talking about it. And I was like, all right. So, I mean, I have no clue. I never looked in a mirror. If we had time, I'd have been like, all right, give me 30 minutes. Let me go in front of a mirror again. We don't have 30 minutes. Yeah. So then I just did some different stuff on camera. And I was like. It's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I mean. And it, 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 and it wasn't the most pivotal thing in such a crazy episode that I'm not concerned about it. Right. And I, but I think the takeaway, the main takeaway was you got people who you put in place to be able to redirect and override and shape something. And you gotta trust those people. And that's what we hired you for. And you more than earned that trust after you know a few days of working together. Yeah. So then by the last day it was like, I just wanted to be able to pull my weight and take the direction. But in, I never questioned whether you guys were right. And you know, we got long standing track record with Stevie and that certainly helped. But I mean, even if, if it was you saying that just alone, it was like I would have totally trusted but I was like, okay, I can't blow this. I, I gotta, I gotta, I've gotta <laughs> change I this character. character on the fly. I gotta change this how, character how entirely. Many, how many characters did you do? Do you know? I lost count. I don't know how many while. characters, but we did. Def we discovered that I had fifty-eight costume changes, and Link had sixty costume changes. So and it, so at least at least twenty percent of those were different characters. Yeah, in right? eight, e eight episodes yeah. of television, which is just stupid. It's just a and um, yeah. So I don't know how many. I, I, I feel like I kind of exhausted my my accent ability. I mean, I don't, the, the Cajun <laughs> accent no, was not really. I mean, it was it was like it was again. It was I was going off of what I'd seen on Swamp People. It wasn't really Cajun. There wasn't any French in there. It was like well, was, I don't know because I wasn't there. <laughs> it I was, was kind like, of get a, me out of here because I don't want it to mess me. Yeah, up. Yeah, you were just kind of like I'm off the ledge on this one. You know, like yeah. it was just like yeah. well, you, you just. Looked, you the way you I looked. had a few root words that yeah. I kept going back to. Yeah, you just cracked, and I liked that because it was the end of the shoot, and I'm like, okay, that you know, because all of them were really cohesive, you know, up right, until right, that right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, you that, know, and it then was it was just, just like, okay, it was just, this is good because it's, it's completely, <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's it's completely cracked open. This is all going the and, way it should go. And then we immediately ran to hair and makeup, and we turned into '80s hair metal, oh, which yeah. we know Singers. that well. We know that right. well. We know that well. That's your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um. Well, I'm gonna have to cut this short, guys, because I got to go to the doctor and figure yeah. out what's wrong with me and if I'm dying or not. Not, not to, uh, not to. You, bring. Let's let's hope that I believe the verdict you have a, is not. You have right? a sore I mean, throat. <laughs> yeah. Let just tell us at the rap party that, yeah. that everything's okay. Well, I might not be able to speak. I might be on vocal rest at the rap rap party, and I'll just bring, a, I'll bring a, a sign. I'll bring a sign. Yeah, and bring put a it sign. on my chest. And you could do this. At, you know, are you doing the must? What's going to happen? Or an, uh, are you going to help him out and shave, and then that will right? You just point at it and be like, he was going to shave that. Talk about that. What's the um, question? Are you going to shave, shave your mustache? mustache? Yes. He's going to shave oh, it. Oh, there you go. But this is the last thing with the mustache. This is it. Yeah, within an hour it's it. going to be gone, and I'll have my wife back. But <laughs> Did oh, I say wife? I meant gosh. life. Oh, gosh. Well, man, it was a privilege to work with you. Likewise. This is, uh, like Link said, we would have enjoyed to be able to kind of stop and reflect and just carry on a friendship throughout, even though we did. <laughs> but it was very much work, 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 just like Rihanna. But it was it, totally worth it, and it, it was. It still was a great experience. Yes. but it was. Uh, it was tough. It, it's nice. Well, to, I mean, I, I'm yeah. exhausted. And now the friendship begins. I think, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. We can start. It's nice that you're yeah. saying that. Uh, that we're friends. Like when you said that to me in the trailer, I was shocked. You know that you were like, we consider you a friend. I'm like, oh man, it's <laughs> a big moment. Just snuck up on me. Um, um, because I was saying to well, my wife- Well, when you go through a near-death experience together, I mean, that's the best right, right, way right, to- right, right. That's the thing. Um, but yeah, I said to my wife in preparation, you know, I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna say on this podcast and all that, and I was like, because I don't think we've had like this long a conversation ever. Like our longest conversation prior to this one was what you mentioned before is when we met. Right, yeah. we got to talk for 30 minutes. Yeah. And then that was that was it. And then yeah, I think we had the the desert island thing, and then we now had the, this. We had the car thing. You told me about your car. Oh right, that was nice. I was like, wow, this, the subject matter is not that interesting, but the fact that we're actually talking Real about something, right? yeah, that was nice. No, that I part was pretty nice. interesting. Yeah, in yeah. So I, I'm happy to. Have we'll talk about the car when you come back. Yeah. Uh, yes, because our friendship will only be conducted on our podcast. <laughs> 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 right. I, I, that's good. No, no. We, uh, this is a I form do. of stopping and celebrating, and yeah. I, you know, I am trying to, like you said. 
you try to be aware, and I am wrapping this up because I know you got to go to the doctor. Just leave. Yeah. We'll keep talking. No, no. Really, I can tell that's what's in your eyes right yeah. now. <laughs> right. I actually went around the bases again after he said, let's wrap it up. So that's, no. my, that's on me. Stopping and celebrating. I feel like this is a component of that to reflect on what we made together. And it's important. And like the rap party, it's important. We're going to go with everybody who we made this thing with. And, you know, you, if it's the last time you see some of those people, hopefully it won't be. But it's like, at least you, you, we commemorated it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's what we're going to do. So that's what you're saying. But, we, uh, but we're our never going to see no, each other again after will the rap party. <laughs> yeah. Our friendship will continue. Thanks for as well as our you. working Thank relationship. Thanks for having me. It was great fun. Thanks yes. for thanks and for thanks for listening. We're not going to have another wrap up other than this. We're just going to toast. Here That's it is. It. <laughs> Come back next week for another ear biscuit. <laughs> <laughs>